We've got Siri, we've got Google Assistant, we also have Alexa. These are all assistants, but their first order of business is converting speech to text. All these are kind of a mixed bag of uh, speech recognition. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Now, I mainly use Siri for transcribing my voice into text. When I take notes while walking my dog, for example, or when I'm in the bathroom, but um, I haven't been super happy with it lately. Today I'm putting them to the test. And we now have OpenAI's Whisper, which you might have heard about. I've tried it out. I'm pretty impressed with it so far. But how does it stack up? Is it that much better than Siri and Google Assistant when it comes to actual recognition of speech? Let's see. So considering how poorly Google's Assistant did, Siri did pretty well. It did get some words wrong. We're gonna tally it up at the end. Google... <laughs> pretty much gave up uh, when it started hearing more than it could handle. But it's a note-taking app. It's called Google Keep. So why wouldn't it work? I don't know. Alexa, unfortunately, doesn't have a note-taking option. So we're not using that. And to test OpenAI, there is a little app called Ico. Aiko, Aiko, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's a free little app. You can either give it files to transcribe or you can record directly into this. And that's what I'm going to try right now. We've got Siri, we've got Google Assistant, we also have Alexa. So obviously one thing to note right away is that this takes an audio recording and doesn't transcribe in real time. And that might give it a little bit of an advantage because it's going to get the context of the full sentence before it guesses what the whole thing is. At least that's my assumption about how it works. Whereas Siri and Google Assistant don't have the luxury of seeing the full context before they have to show you some words that is transcribing. But this thing finished pretty quickly. I'm gonna use this tool called the Word Error Rate Tool, where I can paste the actual text here and the transcription and see what the error rate was. Siri actually had an error rate of 25.5%. That's pretty high. Google's Assistant had an error rate of 55.9%, but of course, it did miss half of what I was saying. If we start the manual transcription from the point where Google actually started listening, then it's actually not bad. It was 9.9%, which is much better than Siri, actually, it turns out. I was wrong about that. I'm already admitting I'm wrong and the video is not even over. What the heck? Now, Whisper. <laughs> Whisper had an error rate of 0.7%. It's nearly perfect. Come on, Siri. Come on, Google Assistant. Let's do this. Let's get these tools in order. The technology is here. If you just wanted to know the performance, we're done. But for the rest of this video, I'm gonna show you how you can get Whisper installed locally on your machine and running and how easy it is to use. And I did record that one uh, a little bit earlier. Shorter hair, different shirt. That's why it's gonna look like this. We're gonna start out with the basics. And this is to use the Whisper repository by OpenAI on GitHub. So here we are. We're gonna go step by step here. There's a nice little example link here that brings you to Google Colab. You're not running this locally in that case, but you can check it out for free over there. We're gonna go down a little bit further to the setup section. This is built using PyTorch. By the way, PyTorch was just updated for version 2.0 recently. And my buddy Daniel Bork just had a video detailing about that. You can check out his channel for that. We're gonna go right here and pip install OpenAI Whisper, but I'm gonna do this in a separate Conda environment because that's how I roll. I like to have a separate environment for that, for all my Python related projects. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, check out my video, which I'll link down below on how to set up an isolated Python execution environment. Conda create and I'll call this environment Whisper. Conda activate Whisper, here we go. I also wanna create a new directory in my code directory. Code is where I keep all my code ready to go. And I'm gonna execute that command, pip install dash dash u open AI Whisper. All right, <laughs> looks like we have an error right away because by default I have version 2.7 of Python. So I need to do a quick little update of Python. Conda install Python equals 3.10. Okay, that's done. What's the next step here? This will update the packages to the latest version of this repository. Well, I don't think I need to do that because I just installed it brand new, but let's see what happens if you run it. Shouldn't hurt. Cool. Now this requires FFmpeg to be installed. I've made a couple of videos on FFmpeg. If you don't know what that is, it's a program that'll allow you to work with audio and 
video files, basically media, and you can install that using Homebrew. If you don't know about any of these things I'm talking about, don't worry, I got you. I have a video where I install each one of these tools step by step. I'll link to that down below as well. When you install Homebrew, which is a great tool to have on your Macs to install other software, you can run it using Brew and to get FFmpeg installed, you use Homebrew. So Brew install FFmpeg if you don't already have it. This will also show you how to install FFmpeg on all these different operating systems, including Mac right here. Brew install FFmpeg. This says you may need Rust installed as well. If you're not familiar with that, then you also should install it. There's a link here to rustlang.org. I actually did a recent video on this as well, how to get started with Rust. It's a pretty simple installation with just one liner right over here. This will get you the Rust compiler as well as the cargo package manager and build tool. Let's run this command right here to make sure we have everything working. Pip install setup tools rust and you should have a success message like that. Okay, available models and languages. There are five model sizes and you can see that they vary quite a bit. The tiny one is about a gigabyte to the large one with over a billion parameters. That one is 10 gigabytes. So if you're running this on a base model Mac mini, I'm sorry, that's not gonna work or it might work just not very well. So if you're running any kind of uh, multiple languages besides English, then you probably wanna get a bigger model and you're gonna need a bigger machine for that. Tiny is gonna have you covered with English. So I think that's what we're gonna go for. Maybe I'll get the base one as well. This also shows you a list of uh, the error rates that you might get in different languages. So Spanish does pretty well here in Italian and then English, Portuguese, German, Japanese, Polish, Russian, those do decent. And then down here at the bottom, you have Armenian, Swahili, Belarusian, and Nepali, which all do not so great. A lot of errors there. So after running all those commands, you should already have Whisper installed. Just make a new directory for where you'd want to do your work. I called mine Whisper. And then you can send it audio files. It takes in different formats like FLAC, MP3, WAV files, and you can specify which model you want to use. By default, it'll use the tiny model. So let's try this out. I have in this Whisper directory, a WAV file. Now, when you install FFmpeg, it gives you the ability to look at the files and examine them for information because when you install it, it gives you other tools like FFprobe. Interesting name, but it's useful. FFprobe-i, and I'm cheating here because I never remember all the commands. It's, there's a lot of commands. Let's give it that file name and run it. Okay, here we go. It reads the metadata from that file, used Adobe Media Encoder. It's a 48 hertz file, two channels, and the bit rate, as well as the length of the audio. So it's about a three minute file, just under three minutes. Now I will run this Whisper program on it. This is Python, by the way, just wanted to make that clear. There is a port of the Whisper code that is C++, and it's supposed to be much faster than the Python version, which I'm doing here. Let me know if you wanna see that, leave a comment down below, and maybe I'll make a video on that as well. Now, the reason I showed you FF Probe here is because that C++ port of this program, Whisper, actually requires you to have a 16-bit audio WAV file only. You can use FLAC, you can use MP3s. All right, let's continue. So now to run this, I'm gonna execute Whisper, the audio file name, and you can specify a model, but I'm not going to. I'm just gonna give it the thing and see what it does. There it goes. First, it detects the language, which uh, you can bypass that detection by specifying the language using the dash dash language flag, uh, but it doesn't take that long to detect the language. It properly detected it as English, and now it's doing the work of transcribing. It just prints it all out right here. This is actually not very fast. Even though I'm using the tiny model, it's still not fast. Now, if you're using the large model, the relative speed is gonna be 1x, which means it's gonna take a half an hour to actually transcribe it, and it's done. Now we can open that folder and you'll see that now I have a bunch of files in here. These are different formats of caption files, SRTs and VTTs, and you also have a JSON file there, but I'm going to open up this text file. And there it is, that's a transcription, beautiful. Now, I haven't verified the accuracy of this, but from my previous experience with using Whisper, it's pretty good. Now, just curious, I know I'm gonna use this, but are you gonna use this? Is this something useful to you? or do you think you have a use case for it? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you like this format of video, let me know as well. Give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.